I've never wanted to be someone who just like declined and then gone into you know, people questioning whether you're good or bad or like whether you're worth the money that you're on, those sort of things. So yeah. for me, it was like I, I wanted to leave the, the party a touch early, but I could only do that when, you know, the next thing is at, at a state where, you know, I'm, it's ready to, to kick on. George Cruz, co-founder of CBD and wellness brand 4-5 and ex-England international rugby player and British Lion. Is that, is that the ultimate goal? We as founders would have to stay with... Okay, welcome to another episode of Screw It, Just Do It, which this week comes to you from the home of George Cruz, co-founder of CBD and wellness brand 4-5, and ex-England international rugby player and British Lion. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> so, always um, start each podcast off by asking our guests what the Screw It, Just Do It moment was that led them to where they are today. So, interested to know, like, your aha moments, your eureka moments when mm. it comes to, like, finishing your career as a professional uh, sportsman and venturing into the world of entrepreneurship and, and starting 4-5, your, your CBD and vitamin brand. So is this a, uh, a screw it for the rubber career or the business? Business, yeah. Business, um, a, a definite one. There was a definite out and out one. Um, both my, myself and Dom, uh, the other co-founder, both sitting on uh, physio beds. Again, after, I don't know, between, between us we maybe had 14 or 15 operations um, wow. and both sitting, both had one and within the, within a week of each other and uh, kind of just like, right, let's, let's, let's figure out what we do from here. Um, let's, I guess the, the first step was, well, how can we like recover better? What's the better, what's, what's, what's out there at the moment? Mm -hmm. uh, Dom's quite, uh, Dom will go like push the boundaries on obviously legally uh, yeah. in terms of as a tested athlete, but definitely, you know, he's, he's searching for, what's the best thing and uh, at the time CBD in America and Canada was pretty hot especially for athletes and mm. yeah I think we just both right let's get down to the local shop and uh, see, see how if this works for us um, got a really good benefit out of it and then off the back of that I guess like a sportsman we've got probably an obsession with trying to get better quicker trying to uh, you know trying to get back on field and those like smaller marginal things really make big differences at the end. So that that was, I guess, the, the process of how we got into it. But again, sitting there like a few weeks later going, right, well, you know, we're still gonna be out for a few months. Let's, you know, could we, should we? Um, and we took on the task of, you know, creating our own company really. And was that a case of seeing what was out there, like, you know, see, you know doing your research, first mm. of all, using the products that you and Dom have been using and yeah. seeing actually, I don't think it's that huge over here, but given what's happened in America, I yeah. think this is worth. It was completely a balance of that. So it was, a, um, I guess, we th we thought there was an opportunity, but then also, as tested athletes, you know, we we definitely weren't happy with maybe the CBD we were taking. Uh, okay. You know, there's a, there was, and probably still is a lot of, you know, crap out there at the moment, um, uh, and we just went, okay, well, let's just let's try and apply like the the rigor and the sort of. Uh, high levels of, um, I guess, intensity and sort of effort you put in into yeah. a product uh, that can represent, you know, a well-tested, um, effective product. And interested to know then again, as, as you mentioned it before, I was going to go into it later, but screw it, just a moment when yeah. it comes to rugby. Um, watching my brother get into the uh, like local county team. And I just thought that is not acceptable. I, I, I want, as I said, like you, you see all like the, you know, the, the kudos, but the, you know, the, the enjoyment he got out of it. And I thought, right, yeah, we've got, I've got two other, two brothers, uh -huh. so you know, it gets quite competitive. So <laughs> but we'll just try and one up him. Yeah, and you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true, true, to be fair. Uh, what I didn't realise was that um, you were already business partners with Dom, but mm. in a in a property business. Um, did you start that when you're both still playing as well? Yeah, so okay. yeah, started that both um, both at Saracens uh, probably a year or so before um, before setting up four or five. Um, yeah, just kind of buying some commercial property, some garages, all those sort of bits, and mm. uh, and then just you know, finding other people to put money in and, and you know co-investing really. And is uh, I read yesterday like Reese Priestland, um, so I'm from Cardiff and Cardiff's my club, Reese Priestland has gone from yeah, Bath, yeah. but it's Cardiff. Um, and he's, he was talking about in the papers last night um, about his 
career after rugby. And he yeah. was saying, I've maybe got another year in me. But when I was at Bath, three you of us... He thinks he's got another year? Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be emailing him. <laughs> Tell him he doesn't. <laughs> he no, doesn't. I'm, no, he's, a, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. Good man. Is so, he? Good player as well. Yeah, yeah he's a very really good player. Nice player. He, he did really well at Bath or his Cardiff. He's yeah. taken a bit more of a back seat to, yeah. uh, to Gerald Evans. But uh, he, he, I think him and two other uh, of the Bath boys um, sat there financial advisor exams and he's yeah. he's got that and he's already thinking of life beyond rugby but in your experience is it unusual for athletes mm. to start thinking about their career and given what's happened at Wasps and Worcester mm. and the kind of out of work player pool getting bigger is that something that you can only see more of that people are looking earlier to the end of their careers it's been a huge change like I've 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 seen it I've, like I've got you know a lot of my mates are still heavily mm. involved in rugby good good few of them are coming to the end and like you can see them going right I, I have to really start thinking about this or I should have thought about this touch earlier um yeah. but that, that that the change in I think the RPA which is Rugby Players Association yeah. they've been doing a really good job of at least trying to get people in and do do you know do it one day a week do something and okay. setting up stuff um Definitely part. I was part of a club which was very good at that. So yeah, Saracens Saris. early door, like made sure anyone under 25 or something was doing a degree or doing a trades course or like they had pretty pretty good steps in place. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm yeah I'm still blown away by how many you know are coming like they might be six months out and not really have thought about it. Um, but really? it is yeah. But it wow. it is um, it's something which is definitely becoming more and more important. Because mm. I, I remember interviewing James Haskell, who you'll know for now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, but it, it was interesting, like, when I spoke to him, because he'd been planning on going out in a blaze of glory at the World Cup in 19, yeah. Yeah. and then he, I think it was his knee he injured. Yeah. And um, when I spoke to him, I think it was in the September, and he didn't know what to do. He had, you know, a load of options, yeah. but he really didn't know which route to go down. But it was funny, what, what came out most for me, we, we kind of talked about, you know, you've done the fitness stuff before, mm. you can do the after dinner speaking and the yeah. media stuff, but was he was he just lit up every time he talked about the DJing. Yeah. And it seems like he's, he's done more of that. Yeah, and he's yeah. obviously written something nuts like six books. And uh, I know, yeah. in the meantime. You'd never know he's written a book at the moment, would you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everywhere and anywhere yeah. on social media. But for you, you went out on your own terms. Does not. Mm. It must be a really small percentage of athletes who can yeah. actually say that, though. Yeah. Uh, it, it, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it was a, a ballsy call, um, but I think like it, it's kind of very pre-planned and uh, like it's not like a reaction or anything. It was, you know, this taken me a long time to decide whether I wanted to pull the trigger this year, the following year, or, or the year after. Like I, I'm 32, I could definitely do. You know, three or four more years, especially in yeah. my position. But uh, could be a, a Tom Brady, and you've been going like forty-six. <laughs> Give me some Super Bowl medals, yeah, or rings. I'll take that. But uh, <laughs> now, I think, I think that for me, there was the, the, the opportunity. You know, like those sigma curves or the the crossovers. Like, I didn't. I've never wanted to be someone who have just like declined and then mm -hmm. gone into, you know, people questioning whether you're good or bad or like whether you're worth the money that you're on. Those sort of things. So yeah. For me, it was like I, I wanted to leave the uh, the party a touch early, but I could only do that when you know the next thing is at, at a state where you know it's ready to, to kick on. And I think with four or five, like you know, we're hitting up some really decent retailers now, and we're we're in a nice position to to to, to push forward. And um, I think that's when it was you know amongst a number of other things like the sacrifices you have for you know yeah. giving up weddings, all those sort of things, mm. um, body injuries might that you know the concussion things there's a, there's a lot that goes into making a decision like that and i you know i spent maybe three or four months with a sports psych to to settle down and put everything out on the table and go right well this is the th sort of things i want to achieve by this and and so on but it takes a long time it takes a lot of thought mm. uh, and i think sometimes like the the money is just a bit too easy the yeah. you know it's just the next the contract's there and people just take it until probably they get to a point where like Oh, I'm I'm sore, and this yeah. is going to affect me long term, or uh, or I haven't thought of what's ahead of me type stuff. So yeah. I don't know. probably a pr bit 
a bit obsessively pre-planned, but... Um, how, how many years out then from when did you start thinking about it? Was it like 29, yeah. or something like that, as you came to 30? Um, or? Well, I'd say, um, I'd say uh, probably about a year and a half ago, I started like properly considering it. Um, it took me, like I said, about six months to make that decision, but like I was kind of making the decision for myself in 18 months time. Right. So like the next, the, the, the other thing I would have wanted to love to have done is probably hit another World Cup, which would be in 2023. Yeah. So yeah. 18 months ago, I had to make the decision, okay, well in 18 months, so 2023, like October time, is that gonna be too much for me? Or have I, would I have missed out on the opportunity of four or five and seeing that grow more? Mm. Um, so that, that was a sort of thought process. And uh, what do you think, I'm going off piece here, what do you think of uh, an Alan Wynn making a last go? He's going to be, what, 36, 37, I mean, uh, same position he's to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the, like, we're in positions which we can do that. I think it's more of an experience-based position. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you almost get paid more for the older you get in, in our position. So it's, oh, yeah. it's um, he's done incredibly well, like, fair play to him. He's, mm. you know, he's hit three Lions tours, he's captain Wales for X amount of times. Forever. yeah. Um, <laughs> And he keeps going, so fair play to him. And difficult question, maybe, but any, any regrets coming up to a year, I suppose, since you finished your last contracts? Um, not at the moment. Like I, I go to the nice. games, I watch the games. Um, Do you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I enjoy. I really enjoy rugby. Still, I enjoy. I enjoy watching it. Yeah. Um, like obviously, it's tough seeing you know seeing the people singing the national anthem and playing and running out in front of twenty or well, eighty thousand. Do you stop yourself from running onto the pitch and joining in the <laughs> no, singing the anthem? No, no. no <laughs> um, I can't run anymore. <laughs> um, but I think like like that is a huge privilege. Like it's it's unbelievable, and to like maybe um, you know possibly have the opportunity to still have been in that position. Um, mm. You know, it, it, you question some bits, but I, because of the, I think the, the the plan that I put in place is it was pretty easy to go like, nah, I'm happy because I've done this, I'm doing this, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I'm content. No regrets. No regrets. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't. And like, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you think it's been a smooth transition? What what kind of things have you missed the most? Has it been more the like the camaraderie of being in like yeah. a, a team setting? Or has it because you've started a business and you've already built a team, whereas a lot of people, they might be going out on their own and doing a trade mm. or something and they, they don't have that and it's more yeah. difficult for them. But is, for you, do you think it's been an easier transition like that? And you've had a business partner as well, you haven't been on yeah. your own. Yeah, no, the, the business partner is a huge thing. I know people often debate like, you know, do you do it by yourself? Do you have a partner? I'm a big advocate of having a partner. I think, um, you know, share the load in terms of decisions and so on. But um, mm. Uh, the, the 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 hardest things. Um, that was a question, wasn't it? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. That was a question. Yeah, that was a question. <laughs> I've gone a well off. Um, <laughs> like, no, pretty pretty comfortable. Um, wow, well, pretty comfortable. I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I good. Think, yeah. Not... Um. So, how long from idea to start four or five yeah. to actually starting it like when you're on the trip yeah, and catch yeah. what was that kind of time scale like for you two um i mean we had to set up a company which like it, rugby players are, or i say athletes in general are so um i guess so sheltered so so mm. like you, you know you ask someone to do a a an email in a day it will take them you know it will take them a week so it's just like it's like that that first bit is like okay we've got to set up a company it probably took us way too long yeah. whereas actually you can set it up and you can set it up in a couple of days but yeah uh, i think once like once that was done all right well we've made a company that's just we've got to dive in now so i think probably sitting on physio beds um in say january 18 um uh to having what a, a product on shelf yeah online yeah yeah Ten months. Ten months. Okay. Quite, quite long time. Yeah, I mean, we, honestly, we're still doing a business. We're still running far a, longer. Yeah, like yeah. a lot and of the businesses we've interviewed, yeah. and they, they always just say the getting the manufacturer is the hardest thing. Yeah, the hardest yeah. thing. Would you agree with that? Supply chain is big. Yeah, okay. especially in a you know in, a, in an FMCG business, that, mm. you know, it's a huge thing. Uh, I think for us, it was just like the big things were like uh, negotiating around um, like setting up bank accounts in a in a, in a area like CBD that was growing at the time, it was quite, um, 
you know, it's quite, it was hard to get a, a trading business account attached to a company. Uh, okay. uh, those sort of yeah. things. It took like three or four months just to do that. Hmm. Um, but obviously, like, yeah, the manufacturing stuff, uh, learning a lot more about it. Like, you, you can't just go in and just profess to know everything. You've got to do, like, some hard graft and hmm. creating a lot of contacts within the, within the industry. Um, and finding, you know, finding a, a decent nutritionist, finding a decent... Um, uh, not neuroscientists who can help along with with all the CBD bits and yeah yeah it's probably building the team and I think ten months yeah okay and it, you've already touched on I was going to ask you about um, what it's like from going in like a team environment like when I worked for Virgin Atlantic like everything was done for us again we were really like cocooned in the they book the hotel for you yeah. they give you an envelope with money and then you know a yeah, card yeah. and load money on it there'd be transport a range and yeah. all of a sudden That's, you're having to do everything for yourself like is that one is, of the biggest it, it, leaps it is yeah it, it really is like the the fact that like you have so a normal like we're going normal day training you go in there'd be your food supplements there uh, you go into change room. You'd have like a nice little folded thing with all your all your kit out laid out for you. Uh, you don't have someone to put your socks on, but I don't know <laughs> what the world's coming to. But uh, and then you go upstairs. You got your breakfast laid out. You've got uh, and you go to the gym. Programs laid out. You know you got sometimes like you'd have like one like almost a one to one trainer with you. You know doing doing all the bits uh, with you and. And then you go, you have food, you've got the meetings all laid out. It's, it's so simple. It's like school on steroids. Yeah. It's just so easy. Um, and all you've got to do is just like properly apply yourself and train and, and work as hard as you can. Uh, I, think, I think coming away from that, you know, where you've got to organise meetings, emails, team, team members, like the, that management pit is, mm. it's like a coach going from being a, like a single skill, like a defence coach to being a team manager. You sometimes see them like just not not work you know it's like you could they could be the best coach in the world at a certain thing but then they have to go and manage a team it's just yeah so i think that sort of like understanding um almost like off, you know, delegation is a huge thing because we're quite proud people we're quite like let's take this on take this on um yeah i'd say that the organization bit of sorting yourself out sorting your life out so you're not then um you know, if you're setting up a meeting and you're late or something, like, that affects other people if you're not yeah. on track. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, a hard, fast track learning curve in those 10 months of like, right, this <laughs> is actually, these are business standards because you don't know what bit of business standard no. is. You know, like no. you could turn up five minutes later, and, you know, that, that would annoy someone. Yeah. It, it, it annoys people in sport as well, but mm. that's probably a poor example. But, you know, yeah, there's a lot of different areas which are completely different to, uh, to from sport to business. And... Um, what stopped you from from doing it sooner? Then was there anything that was stopping you and Dom from like pressing go on this project yeah. before then? Um, uh, I, I think really like it, we didn't really know about CBD until pre pre um, pre uh, two thousand eighteen. But th there was also CBD as a uh, as a banned s substance came off the banned substance control list right. in January two thousand eighteen. Ah, so it kind of all aligned yeah. quite quite nicely. Um, yeah. So you've got like in a cannabis plant, you'll have a number of different cannabinoids and THC is the one which is like gets you high. Mm. CBD, there's lots like CBN, CBG, a load of other cannabinoids. CBD got taken off the banned substance of this. So kind of like okay. all aligned at once really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what, interested to know again, so how do you split up um, different roles that you, you've yeah. done? Do one of you go, I'm, I'm, I'm CEO, I'm um, yeah. MD? I mean, how, how did yeah. that work out? No, was we, that combo a, like? There's a big hat at the start of the day and we just go and we're like, oh, I'm on sales today. Uh, um, nah, I think it kind of just um, probably, like it just falls into your personality or your work types, mm -hmm. I guess, I think. Um, uh, so Dom's a bit more on the sales side. Um, I will do more investor comms, um, networking, business development bits. I'd probably a bit more team, team oriented bits. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, I think it just goes from there. But we're we're actively looking for uh, an MD at the moment who can who can basically a, a, a like I shouldn't be doing a lot of the the team management bits. I shouldn't be sorting out, you know, EMI those sort of those yeah. sort of bits. It, I should be going out selling and all those. So I think at the moment, like that's a huge step for us and I'm super excited to, to get that person on board. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, right. but people, yeah. you know, you've got, you've got to do everything at once uh, yeah, yeah. at the beginning and then, you know, as you grow, 
you section out different things. I think that's our next one, which I think will make a huge difference because like we've got good contacts, you know, and, and I love speaking to people and, you know, and, and selling as well. So it's, yeah, it's about that times will be good for us. And it, what was the, what was the first hire you made then? When it's just like day one, there's like yeah. you two in the yeah, kitchen yeah, yeah. or whatever. First hire, yeah. Um, it was a very hardworking South African. Uh, who actually only, only left uh, not too long ago uh, to go into a, a completely different sort of, uh, I guess, career path. Um, mm. But yeah, a, a good hard work in South Africa, more just to do ev everything that we couldn't really do in sort of, you know, packing and all those sort of okay. bits, which was like a, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. It was really good. And, and we're at like maybe eight or nine staff now, um, one over in South Africa as well. Um, so yes, yeah, we're, we're growing. growing. Yeah. And, and what were your attitudes to risk, like you compared to Dom as well? And stuff? Yeah, different. Different. I, I put, Interesting. I put different. Dom, Dom likes a punt. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'm sort of, um, I guess, probably a bit more risk adverse. Um, but, but that's the beauty in having, you know, founders which are, which are different. And, yeah. I, and I'm like, and you can't be the same founders, I think. You've got to have differences. Definitely. Um, yeah. You know, so he'll come to me with something and be like, that, I'll just go, that's mental. That is, just, <laughs> that is off the table. And I'll go to him with something. He's like, mate, come on. We're like, we've already done twice, twice as much as that. Or, you know, so I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. so there's a lot of conceding. Um, we haven't actually had a, a, a decent blow up yet. Um, that's is, disappointing. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm try, I keep trying to poke him with, with bits. Who would win? Just, yeah. Who would win? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I keep trying to, keep trying to poke him, but... Um, yeah, no, they've got good, strong relationship, good relationship. And um, what were some of those first actions that you took? Um, maybe you can give some examples to the audience that, you know, when you started the business, was it an email, was it a, a phone call, a, co a conversation with somebody? What kind of kicked things off, you know, from, from yeah. that initial idea and going down and seeing what, you know, products were in the shops? Um, it was, yeah, like it's all product led for, for ages, isn't it? Um, mm. But it was then just trying to find like suitable agencies to, to, to fit certain things. Like we didn't want to hire like immediately because we needed to do a lot of learning. So using the agencies to learn and then finding people who, who can then take certain bits in house. Um, yeah, a, a lot of it was just network building and like we're incredibly fortunate with the, I guess the, the sport we're in, it is a, it is a probably a, um, it's a sport with a lot of people who, you know, you look at Twickenham, you look at the people who go there in the in the corporate lounges yeah. and so on. There's a, a lot of like CEOs and sort of yeah, true C-suite from a lot of big companies, which you know can can really really help out. So it's it's very very aware of that uh, of that and you know the efforts that I guess. Um, you know, I've taken to get to that spot. But and, and did you have a network at that point from doing? you know, just meet and greets and stuff up yeah. before and after games, or was it something that you, you know, because I can imagine some players would just shy away from that and just yeah. get a beer and go and sit in the corner, you know? Yeah, I, I, I'd i sit very much uh, on 50-50 of that. So I'd do like okay. a good stint of like, right, let's let's crack on, meet some good people, uh, and then I would go for the beer as well. <laughs> like it's quite, yeah, but I, I think in, in hindsight, I probably would have done a 75-25. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's an incredible yeah. asset, um, but it's... Uh, and, you know, and post career can take you a long way, but um, yeah, uh, yeah I, th I think it's it's like the, the the next steps or who we were who we were getting hold of major major mainly agencies through trusted networks mm -hmm. uh, just to kick things off, uh, and then it's just about it was for us it was about setting up like a, a good advisory network uh, of like people we can pick their brains of yeah. Sense check stuff. Um, probably did, should have done a bit more sense checking. Some ridiculous things that we've done and some made mistakes. And give us give us an example, George. Um, so, so Dom has a friend in, in Ireland who um, who set up um, these. Um, they're like you know in like shopping malls and they'll have like little stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the like you set you set that one. They absolutely killed it for vaping. Okay, yeah. And we were all like. Oh, we're onto something here. We could set these up all over England in, uh, in like you know Westfield, all those sort of yeah. things, uh, and put CBD in them. And, and obviously the market just wasn't there. But right. but we didn't test that or sense check it. Um, uh, and we bought like through or 
you know, pricey numbers um, for these like big counter things, you know, LEDs on and sort of, you know, we, we got people down there into, uh, into, we hired people to, God, this project took so long. We, we hired people to, you know, you know, man the force there and, and, and do all the promo. Do, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and we was like, it was like one sale a day. I think within like three weeks, we were like, cut it. Couldn't really sell the units because it, it, we it was going into lockdown and like it was just, so basically oh, we just like hell. we took about forty grand and just lobbed out the window. No, but you know we live and learn. We, yeah, we don't tell the investors that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. They know. They know. But um, that like that 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 was like a good learning curve where we just sat back and went, we've got to do more research on stuff we do. Like, mm. you know, you can't just. You can't just have an idea which suddenly like, three or four people go, that's a good idea. Yeah. And then that's validation. Like that's not how stuff works. It's got to be, <laughs> it's got to be, I guess, a bit more data driven. And uh, yeah, it can't just be because four people say it, it sounds good that yeah. that's what we'll do. That's, um, that's, a, that's a great example. Especially though. looking at the, the, the experience of the four people in the room who said, yeah, it looks good. It was right. like <laughs> two rugby players. Um, you know, some guys have, have worked in you know, um, like sh shoe shops. <laughs> <laughs> random. It was it was a random yeah. mix, but um, yeah, it didn't work out for us to put it that way. <laughs> and what do you think mm. if you if you both hadn't pulled the trigger on four five? Yeah. What would you be doing now today in twenty twenty three? Do you think? I probably would have been heavily uh, putting you know putting money into property. To be honest, like that, like okay. Sports people, I, I speak on behalf of, of rugby players. It is property shop, property and coffee shops. Like that's the yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. that's the that's the way forward. But and it you know it serves well. It definitely serves well for a large number of people. You know, in the last thirty years because of the way property's gone. But could be interesting in the next few years. And uh, tell me, like again, when you go back to like when you were both on the on the treatment couch and you said like mm. between between you like. 14, 15 injuries over the years. Yeah. Can you remember like what wasn't injured over the years then basically? Probably easier, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, it's just like, I've got to the point where we had so many operations with the same surgeon that he, he's now invested into our company. <laughs> There's actually two of them. One's done, my, one's done my knee, one's, I mean, they are unbelievable. They're like the, the, they are unbelievable surgeons and they do all the, the um, all the rugby and football players and so on, but it's funny. Like I'd turn up and I'd be like, oh. I was like, where are you gonna put money in? And he's like, all right, next one. <laughs> so the next one, all right, we're in. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the that's the point where we got to. And what was, um, you know, the, the injuries that, that you both had at the time, if you can remember that um, you'd started exploring CBD with yeah. and you were getting like some benefit from that? Uh, I had a, I was having, my, I think, my third ankle operation on my left side. Um, so it was more of a clear out, you know, I had little bits of floating bone and that. Mm. And Dom, I think, had a meniscus on his knee, sort yeah. of a, another clear out. And, um, yeah, we were just sitting there post, post Christmas ops. Um, but, but, yeah, I think, like, CBD was a, was a, was a, was a starting point for us. Um, and, and from there, we've... You know, we looked at what other nutrition, what other things we were taking, our, our daily essential stacks, so our vitamins, our, our biotics, fish oils. Uh, and, and, you know, I guess when we looked at that, it was, it was like very, very clear that when you do a, like a deep dive into those things, it's like it's got this amount on the NRV for, mm. uh, you know, for this marketing claim. It's got this amount for this. It's all sort of, it's all marketing driven. Yeah. And I think, you know, you look at 90% of the, you know the vitamins and that in in retail high street that a lot of them are very much geared towards how they can market the product rather than you know what's essentially good what can be absorbed what's useful what's effective and uh, i think mm -hmm. for us we've got some very good nutritionists on board so it's not like me and dom just going that's <laughs> cooking up <laughs> bit, bit, of, bit of this bit of that um but yeah like it was essential for us to, i guess with our background and and um like to put that sort of rigor, uh, put that uh, like amount of effort into making sure it's a good quality product, mm -hmm. and then um, and then it should might be able to market itself. It, it's funny, like another era, but when I, I used to play rugby, and the, the highest I ever got was bar thirteen. Yeah, and I ended they were up a mean team. They had a well unbeaten season between. 
Well, I, I was like the era, and it, you know, to try and get into the first team at that point, like Andy yeah. Robinson was like the number seven oh, for yeah. Bath. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you got you know Neil Back playing score. against him at Leicester and stuff. So um, to get into the third team um, was like highlight of my career, playing yeah, yeah. playing at the Rec, which you would have played on many times. Yeah, but yeah. The swamp. you know, but, yeah, but but back in those days, it was you know like Magic Sponge or or DP. Yeah. But things yeah, have yeah. obviously accelerated very quickly. Yeah. Um, I know, like other players um, in the space that that we've had on the podcast, like Pure Sport, yeah. um, Can Array as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Where do you think you can, you know, carve out a, a niche for yourself? Where do you think you can you can differentiate in in the marketplace? Mm. And it sounds like you you've gotten in at a good time. Yeah, whereas yeah. again, like it'd be that thing like starting a coffee shop now compared to like ten yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah. for example. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, where, where do you think? Um, uh, are your strengths and, and where you can kind of carve out your USP for for four or five? Yeah, like we are. Um, I guess like if you probably need to look at a retail shelf in the sports, uh, sorry, in the CBD or wellness or vitamin section, there'll always be like there'll probably be a kids one, a kids vitamin, a, a male, a female, uh, you know, a bit more of a lifestyley one, maybe a beauty one, and then there'll be a sports or active one. I think for us, um, we're in boots. Tesco's, uh, we've just launched in Holland and Barrett. Um, Congrats. We're launching in Lloyd's as well, Lloyd's Pharmacy. So I think for us within those sectors, like we are going hard out on making sure that, you know, we're the go-to um, active or sports brand. Um, so for us, that's like, it kind of like flows through with, with everything in the company though. Like, you know, we are uh, wellness suppliers to professional sports teams like Saracens and Tigers and, yeah, um, and a number of others. We, you know, we've got fifteen plus pretty world class international athletes in different sports invested into our company, mm. um, and and we are like, you know, a lot, a lot of the other investors are all sort of sports business companies um, who have invested in. Uh, so we're we're pretty we're pretty set on, uh, you know, if we were then go do uh, face masks, it would it would be a little bit it would be a little bit uh, out of the box. But for us, it's, it's sports and active angle. And were your first customers the athletes that you, you already knew? Yeah, I, I, it's essentially, yeah. I think mm. there, there was a lot of um, a lot of customers uh, through through sport or professional sport. I think for us, it's like it's really it's it's, it's important for us to to like I guess explain the story of like it's you know we put all the effort and the background and the. Um, like the the intensity that it takes from a sport sports profession into making these these supplements, um, it's that doesn't necessarily mean that they are only for you know professional sports people. It's just that they are of a standard that we are happy with. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they're highly tested, third party tested by multiple different people. Um, so that's kind of like the, the the approach we're going for, but definitely more of a you know anyone who's active sort of sort of angle. Yeah, because I saw like the, the mission, and maybe it's changed a little bit. But uh, you know, when I was doing my research, you know, one of the things I read was that is to allow people to live their most active life, yeah. and I love that because it's like massive vision. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if you kind of draw it in, it also sounds like it's achievable. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Just for like your average doe like me, who um, you're not average, <laughs> mate. Oh, <I> <laughs> but, but below it, <laughs> below average. <laughs> but you know, finished um, playing rugby ages yeah. ago but I've started running and I did the New York Marathon back yeah. in November and I'm doing nice. London yeah, yeah. Uh, in April yeah. but you know I knew nothing about nutrition I did a yeah. marathon on my own during lockdown and I went out with five jelly babies in my pocket and you hit a wall and I managed yeah I did yeah. I, I still finished it but I did it yeah, but yeah. then doing New York you know <laughs> five jelly babies and, and a water pack that burst been soggy as well <laughs> exactly the water pack burst at 10 miles like cascading down my back, down my legs, jelly babies, soaked to death. Had to put in a phone call to um, to my wife to to like drive out and meet me half over. Yeah, with protein bars this oh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. But when I did New York, you know, I got like science in sport <laughs> um, products, and, and I think you've just released something similar with like the um, tablets that go into into your drinks and like the energy gels and stuff like that. Some over there, somewhere, yeah. Okay. Yeah, some hydration tablets. Yeah, so t talk <clears> us <throat> a little bit about the, the product range that you got at the moment, like yeah. any NPD that you got yeah. cooking up in the in the kitchen at the moment as well. In the, yeah, I, I like for us, um, it's it's important to 
to understand like our need states when playing uh, when playing professional sport we're like you know we want to recover quicker we want to get over we want to get over this like sleep is a big thing focus is a big thing you know anxiety is a big thing for a lot of people within uh, professional sports so it was trying to like I guess assess those big need states because they are the same between you know a professional athlete and a non-professional athlete you know mm. you, you also need your sleep as much and, and that, that translation is uh, huge for us uh, and I think we've tried to like create products or are creating more products that really section out some of those areas so okay things like sleep you know there is like CBD is a great a great example for that but then uh, you know like the, the 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 new product development will be a lot more focused around things like focus. Um, like I said, a number of different areas. But at the moment, we've got a good CBD range, uh, and that will have tinctures, capsules, um, topicals. So like a deep heat with yeah, CBD. Yeah. That's like my favourite one. Yeah. yeah. Post marathon. Uh... Yeah. You just got to watch where you put your hands after rubbing Correct. on. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, and then we've got a really good stack of daily essentials, so male, female multivitamins, um, fish oils, biotics, uh, a lot of those with like very good studied ingredients, so trademarked ingredients which have like good science behind them, mm -hmm. making sure that it's the quality and, and the testing that is uh, that is right high up there. Um, we've brought out a hydration tablet recently. I think hydration for me is like a it's such a huge topic, which is also, also like under sort of, you know, the amount of people that will go to the gym and, you know, maybe they'll go to the toilet before the gym and their, you know, urine will be bright orange and then they'll yeah. go do a gym session regardless. Yeah. Like we, as, as I guess, as athletes. Here we go. Someone prepared earlier. Look at that. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we, as athletes, <clears throat> we'd get tested before, so urine tested before training. Uh, and if it was over a certain level, you'd be pulled from training because really? the, the risk of injury is just too high. Because, wow. you know, if you don't have enough uh, water in your, in your, in your muscles, you, you, you're, they're easier to tear. You also don't get much out of the, you know, the performance of actually doing the mm. exercise itself. So I think that as an indicator of like where people are at, they, you know, a, a simple use is just looking at what color your urine is. If it's yeah. like, if it looks like, you know, something that's radioactive, then, <laughs> probably just you're better off not training. Um, but for us, you know, taking that knowledge of what we've been through and trying to apply it into, you know, a bit more of a day-to-day -day scenario is something that's hugely important for us. And I think there's things like hydration, you know, mm. people can get huge benefits out of just being properly hydrated, not only from a concentration point of view, from like a, you know, work work environment, True. You know, big meetings. And mm. so before this, I'd have, I'd have had a hydration, not because I'm gonna go for a run because, I don't want to be talking crap, but obviously I probably need more hydrations because I'm talking absolute crap. <laughs> Not at all. No, I, I take a tablet every day now um, as well, but before, when it came to like the marathon training, I knew nothing about yeah. uh, that. And I, I did end up doing this, funny enough, this program, 75 hard, but drinking like a gallon of water a day. Yeah. And I've got back on it now, thinking I've got 16 weeks mm. to London. And just the difference yeah, in yeah. like, how alert you feel yeah. and how focused you feel is a completely different ball game. Whereas you see what like my, like my kids would drink and you, you're lucky if they drink a glass a day when you're not looking at them. So yeah. you put it in front of them at mealtime, yeah, yeah. you know, you just think, yeah. what are you doing in school? Yeah. Teachers don't allow us to drink. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Punishment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, it, it's one of the simplest things to change. Like it's mm. not like you have to change your, you know, you don't have to sacrifice going to bed two hours early or whatever. It's like wake up in the morning, have a pint, feel better like yeah. and you and, and it's also quite a simple thing to track as well like like i said if you yeah with you know, the urine. everyone yeah, look, yeah. like look at the color of the urine if it looks off then you know just yeah. drink more it's a, such a simple thing um mm. and, and it, it for me it makes a huge difference like scientifically there's hundreds of papers it makes a huge difference yeah um and we've got listeners now i checked the other day it's gone up 20 countries so 180 countries now listen to this podcast where can people get oh, a hold bonjour. of the product <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Japanese? Uh, konnichiwa. Yeah, very good. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, 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 <laughs> that's, that's my on. crap humour trying to on. take over conversations. <laughs> now, so where at the moment are uh, the markets you're focusing? Yeah. You mentioned you've got someone in South Africa. Yeah. Um, primarily UK, but um, yeah. where else can people buy your products? Yeah, we want to make a, a big dent in the UK, um, especially that retail um, footprint as well. Um, we're in South Africa, so we're in Discam, Take-A-Lot. 
uh, and 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 going into others. Um, and we'll get some. We've got some bits over in Norway at the moment as well, okay. um, yeah. and trying to trickle into Scandinavia. But main focus in the UK. Um, Make a big dent there first. Yeah, just yeah. I just prove concept completely, and then you know, then hopefully get bought. Is that is that the ultimate goal? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, three years, hopefully. Yeah, like I, I think we as founders would have to stay within that for for a, yeah, a, yeah. Good, a good long while after, I'd imagine. Yeah. But you know, I think a, a part of retiring early was I want to do a lot of different chapters in my mm. life, and, and this is a chapter which I've been itching to do and and, and massively enjoying. Right. Um, and like I said, I want to make sure I've got a couple more room for a couple more. So. Yeah, we we interviewed Al Barrett, like it was the first podcast he did after um, selling to like Montelis. Is he? Well, I mean, he's, he's a top like, guy. Yeah, fair play. He's a really good guy, and that was like two hundred million. Yeah. After I think maybe nine years or something yeah. like that, and again, I think it's a similar thing. Like you're yeah. then in that golden handcuffs for for a couple of years, yeah, type yeah, thing, yeah. like that like three years maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's got to be the ultimate goal, isn't it? Something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exa- exactly. I mean, I, I just want to like. I'm, we're very aware of like where and who we are right now. Is like, like we've come from 15 years of me and Dom like chucking a ball to each other like this, uh, <laughs> and now we're in like an office trying to lead people and you know trying to like, like I walked into we pitched boots when I walked in with a, a black eye and a and a like an ankle brace uh, like a <laughs> like a moon boot and on, yeah, yeah. on crutches. It was just like okay, well we're actually we're sitting in the deep end here now. So uh, I think for us this is like huge in terms of learning. You know, building ourselves a, a decent con- uh, network, but the learning phase is something which, like, I've always been curious, passionate about mm. learning, um, and that that is a, this is like a brilliant project for us to get properly stuck into. And what challenges have you say identified yeah. that would stop you from reaching that goal in say three years' time? Is there is there anything on the on the horizon, you know, like competitors, yeah. some someone huge coming into the space or yeah. uh, I mean you look at, you know, I interviewed Richard Reed from Innocent um and you know they did like five hundred million to Coca Cola, north of five hundred million, yeah, you know. Incredible. And he said I always remember him saying like on the he got home on the Friday to tell his wife and um he said this is it, literally 500 million deal. We've sold to Coca-Cola, I've signed the paper, which is like, brilliant. Can you take this back to Ikea, please? Yeah, he goes, I st- stood at Croydon with a, like a £9.99 shelf to get, get the refund on, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, welcome to reality. That is brilliant. <laughs> That's good though, can keep you humble. Exactly, yeah. Um, what would be the issue? I, I, like, I think, pro- like, the first one, and I mentioned it earlier, was the, like, get, making sure we got a really decent MD in place to, to help run the ship so that, you know, I guess, because at the moment we've got, I guess maybe an opportunity cost where me and Dom could be out doing more, selling more more this, but mm. actually, like, we're actually a lot of our time spent sort of managing a team, but we'd probably be managing them, you know, not unbelievably well. So <laughs> if we bring an MD in who can manage them really well, but then also we get the added bump of, you know, more, um, I guess, closer to, to the end user um, yeah. on our side. Uh, that's that's a big one. So making sure that that hire is done very very well, um, and that will come from investment, like next round of investment potentially. Yeah. So we've hire. just finished. Uh, we've just we've just finished up with a mill. We're, we're going to do another probably five hundred. Um, I'm just thinking of a little cute way to do it through some um, some athletes, which would be quite nice. Uh, yeah. We've like I said, we've already got fifteen plus international athletes invested. So. I just want to really hammer home the point that we are a sports brand. Yeah, uh, you know. Um, can you can you name check any of those athletes that they're? Oh, I'm sure you can go on. Or, on, on I mean, you, or ambassadors that you've got that you and um, that people might 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 know that use the products. Um, Jason Fox. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're interviewing him for a podcast soon. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> make, make sure he's a. Uh, Make sure he's got someone who's just part of it. Oh, we'll literally say that you've got Johnny yeah. Wilkinson and Jason Fox are like the first two interviewees. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, a, num- a number of, I'm sure you can go look at a company's house or something, but a, n- yeah. a number of athletes. Okay, um, I'll do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Insert space. <laughs> Insert space, yeah. Uh, uh, so I think the MD is, is a huge one for us because like, as we, are, we know our weaknesses as athletes, I think because we're constantly told, like, Look, you are crap at this, you do better at this, and then you've got to change it within a week. So I'd yeah. say we know our weaknesses, and that is like an area which we could definitely get someone in to help boost um mm. but then yeah you know there could be another pandemic there could be there's all sorts of things you can't plan for but i think yeah. you know we've we've got a good 
we'll have a good good amount of money in the bank to to go and do what we need to with a bit of contingency in there as well. So it's exciting. I think yeah, I think more it's making sure that me and Dom are laser focused uh, yeah. and getting someone in to really help manage and drive the team. So be so as we were chatting to you before, be be aware of the opportunities, but only the ones that align to that goal that in yeah. three years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and kind of working backwards, like we've spoken to a few people who have sold some of the larger nutrition companies um, mm. and just trying to work back to think, okay, well, these guys like this sort of thing. Um, they like these metrics. They like this balance between retail and D to C. Mm. Uh, how do we pre-plan that from a, you know, a few years out? Yeah. Well, look, um, always finish up by asking um, our guests if, if they can recommend anyone who they think would be a good guest for the show, yeah. anyone come to mind. And again, you don't have to give us the answers right now. You can think about it and um, get back to us. But anyone that springs to mind you think would be a great guest for the show, let us know. I'll say Haskell, but he's been on. He is just comedy gold. He is comedy um, gold, yeah, 100%. Uh, I'll, I'll have a good think. Um, should get Eddie Jones on. Yes, well, opportunities at the moment to, to talk. You should get him on. He's yeah. good. Really, really good. I'm a fan. Good Are fan. you? Yeah, fan. okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. He always uh, talks a lot of sense when I, when yeah. I listen to him. Even being a passionate Welshman yeah. is, uh, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, Cardiff. Yeah. Sorry. Dom's not here. Well, we've done the interview already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, wish you, wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Big fans um, of the company. Love, love to see you do well. So, thank you. George Cruz, thank, thank you very you. much. Cheers. Thanks for watching this episode of Screw It, Just Do It. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below this video. Has this episode helped move you closer to where you want to be? All that I ask is that if you enjoyed this episode and that it's moved you closer to getting to where you want to be, that you share this episode so that it helps one other person do just the same. Just ask yourself what small action will move you forward to get you from where you are, then screw it and just do it. Until next time. <laughs>